situation. Marv, another thing we've seen in the last two first quarters, basically Iverson and Matumbo have scored all their points. Let's see if they can get someone else involved here to help them. Iverson played by Fisher. Fisher with the steal and is grabbed by Iverson. So Iverson giving up the foul, and he thought he was fouled. Well, one of the things that we know, Fisher is about 25 pounds heavier. He's going to put his body on him. He's going to bang him. He's going to try to get his hand up in his face. And there is a frustration foul by Allen Iverson. Now, he must stay out of foul trouble, but very unhappy. Remember, Marv, the game in L.A., or excuse me, in Philadelphia, very concerned about it. he was getting hit in the face all the time with Fisher's hand. Eric Fisher, a very aggressive defender. And we get a whistle away from the ball. Dick Pavetta with the call. Now the Sixers a hold called on, on Tyrone Hill. Derek Fisher says that he has had to make adjustments in his uh, game defensively. Usually takes those signature charges. Ryan is fouled, so a third straight foul on the on the 76ers. But uh, Fisher so aware that the officiating, as he put it, changes uh, in the in the playoffs, particularly here in the finals, and he's afraid he will not get the calls, particularly against Iverson. Well, as you said, he's one of the best in the league at drawing the charge, but it's such a bang-bang kind of play that with Iverson, if it's close, Fisher's probably going to get the foul. That's just the way it works. The 76ers committing three fouls within the first 30 seconds. So Kobe Bryant at the line. Kobe with a sensational all-around performance in game four. He was one assist shy of a, a triple-double. More of a setup guy with Shaquille O'Neal coming through with an overpowering ball game. Eric Snow handling. Eric Snow began this series coming off the bench. Here's Iverson. Yes. And he's going to need a lot of that tonight. We've talked in our open mark. 30 is not going to be good enough. Nor is 35. He's going to have to score in the 40s tonight. And it was not a strong 35 points the other night. A bad shooting ball game for Allen Iverson. Did not really get into it until that run in the fourth quarter. And he's shooting right at 40% for the series. It's taken him 130 shots to get 141 points. Tumbles pass to Hill. Oh, Tyrone Hill with an early bucket. We have not seen that all series. A oh, very positive sign there. Tyrone Hill's almost, Hill's almost been squeezing the air out of the ball with the strip. The Sixers want a fast start. Not the case the other night. Fox had an ocean with uh, Shaquille O'Neal down court, but the tumble was able to hustle back. Now Shaq getting down deep. That's a rare miss for Shaquille O'Neal when he's that close. Iverson with the head play. Iverson, yes. Degree of difficulty on those shots over Shaquille O'Neal is really amazing. 76ers with a 6 2 lead. And here's O'Neal getting the stop, but he missed the stop. Iverson again, stutter steps. Iverson, Snow with the putback. Well, Shaquille O'Neal did not get back from half court, so he missed a couple shots here early that he got off to a great start in game four. But he's got to get back on defense. Now being forced further out. And a foul is called. It's on the Sixers. Iverson came from the blind side looking for the steal. Hit with a second and also collects a technical foul. Well, you can see the passion running early in this ballgame. Allen Iverson, that's why I thought the first foul that he committed, Marvy, should have let go. Now he's got himself in peril here with two fouls. Also a technical, so he has to be very careful to regain that composure. He's a guy that plays with so much energy and passion. He's trying to settle himself down. He realized not only uh, has he committed bad fouls, but bad decision in picking up the technical. Well, you can see he reached in there. He actually had good help defensively. Eric Snow was there to give help. Matumbo was behind him defensively. He did not need to commit that foul. Philadelphia with an 8-3 lead here at the start. The mismatch with the Iverson involved with Grant down low. Grant just did get it off to beat the 24. Iverson 
set by Shaq. No count. Foul called before the shot attempt. Holding foul away from the ball on Fisher. Well, Derek Fisher got caught in a switch on Matumbo, and what he did, he tried to prevent him from rolling to the basket. Joey Crawford, the official, ruled that he impeded his progress and called the foul. Eric Snow being played by Kobe Bryant. We're just underway here in Philadelphia. The 76 is trying to stay alive, looking to a sixth game in Los Angeles. And McKee cannot find the range. One for nine in game four this past Wednesday night. Yeah, and he's 12 for 41 for the series. That's under 30%. And shaky play here by the Lakers. Iverson chased by Bryant. And Iverson hit on the fast break. And then ends up flying into the photographer's area. Fisher for three. From downtown. Seems like the Lakers, all this playoffs have come up with timely shots. Guys hitting big threes to prevent runs that give you surges that sort of knock you on your heels early in the game, Marv. We saw that the other night. Robert Orley, Brian Shaw, Darren Fisher all hitting from, from downtown at opportune times. There's Hill, very active here at the start. Hill again the back. Tyrone Hill, who had been struggling to say the least, finally broke loose a little bit, had seven points in game four. But the Sixers are, are playing out of a double team. The Lakers are double teaming Matumbo early. We have not seen that much, Barb. So what it's done, it's freed up Tyrone Hill. He's cut to the basket, got a pass. He's got an offensive rebound. So now he's involved in this game. I'm a little surprised that uh, the Lakers are double teaming Matumbo. Perhaps the element of surprise by Phil Jackson here at the start. But the Sixers are finding other people. And uh, Tyrone Hill with four points and four rebounds. Well, the Sixers already have 12 points. Remember, they only had 14 in the first quarter of game four. So the lineup changes helped get them off to a good start. Chad of defense from this crowd. Once again, Shaq forced to start out a bit deeper than usual, but a beautiful spin. And the Sixers now lead 12-8. Well, when he makes that shot, he, he's indefensible. you got to take away his dunks and layups and force him to shoot jumpers. For Shaq, his first field goal. Nice pass from the top of Defensively, and the Sixers were ready for it. McKee with a great backdoor cut, and he found his teammate Matumbo. Here's the double on Bryant. Fisher for three. Grant with a good play to get to that rebound. Horace Grant extending over Aaron McKee. See, when you have to do a lot of double teaming, what happens is many instances you get caught with a smaller man underneath the basket guarding a power forward. That's exactly what happened on that uh, play, and Horace took advantage of it. So the 76ers lead 14-10. Iverson, yes. Allen Iverson. Off to a superb start. He's four for five. He has eight points. He has picked up two fouls plus a technical. Ball movement by the Lakers, and Fox knocks down the three. Rick Fox had a couple of timely hoops the other night. In fact, his only baskets, he was two for seven, seven points. 76ers lead, 16-13. Iverson is open from downtown. 76ers have not been able to hit from beyond that three-point line. Well, Iverson for the series, eight for 28, only 29%. Marv, to put that in perspective, as we see Iverson's last basket, he works so hard, he comes off those screens, and the one thing he's done, he's become a better shooter on this kind of shot. He used to be sort of casted the ball up there. Now he has much better release on the shot. But Marv, one of the differences in this series is that three-point line. The Lakers have outscored the Sixers 33 points from behind the line in the series. They hit 26 from three-point line. There's another by Rick Fox. And the game is tied at 16. So they have 27 threes, while the Sixers with only 13. And 
this crowd continues to urge the Sixers on. Matumbo. So important to Matumbo to continue hitting that perimeter shot to draw Shaquille O'Neal outside. Are you still incredulous? No more. I, I, I buy it now. All right. He has all the moves. Baseline jumpers straight away. Once again, Grant off the mismatch, came up short as the tumble, came over to alter the shot, but then deflected it out of bounds. Iverson, a 73% free throw shooter during the NBA Finals. Let's check in with Jim Gray. Jim? Sixers now lead 19-18. Shaq had been rather quiet, Marv. I think he felt like we needed to talk about him a little bit after that. <laughs> wow. Woo. Second field goal for Shaquille O'Neal. Here comes Fisher. Iverson on the open floor. Grant is back. Iverson taking all the way. And batted out of bounds by the 76ers. Now watch the power of Shaquille O'Neal. Watch Matumbo. It's almost like he lifts him off the floor. Your feet leave the floor. It's pretty difficult to jump, and Shaq just powered it in the basket. Good pass. Fox does not force the issue. Thought he had the step, but was met by Matumbo. Here's Grant. Lakers try to get Horace Grant more involved with the offense. 346 remaining. George Lynch has checked in for the first time coming out for Tyrone Hill. And McKinney hits his first field goal. Tyrone Hill getting a hand from the crowd as he sat down with four points and, and five rebounds. George Lynch made his return from the broken foot. Wednesday night in game four, played eight minutes. And he's just out of the floor trying to help do some things defensively. Here's Bryant. Rebound O'Neal. Has the double team going. Lynch over to help. Fisher for three. Yep. Garrett Fisher with his second three-pointer. Again, that timely three-point shooting off an offensive rebound. The court is broken. It's tough to find a man. And those are the kind of threes that really, really hit you hard. The game is tied at, at 21. Lakers four out of five from downtown. Matumbo. Oh. Lynch with the rebound. Oh. I thought he blocked his own shot. Well, he had no lift. That's where you can see that he has not played. He wanted to go up, but he would normally dunk that ball. Looked like he was uncertain. Yes. And a timeout taken with two and a half remaining. And he said, you know what, Doug, this is just a setback. I asked him if he was discouraged. He said, I'm not discouraged, I'm just disappointed. He said, I was playing so well, I was starting to get my legs back and my timing. He said, so it's just going to delay my decision. When I heal up, I'll get back to my training and see where I'm at. But uh, probably six or eight weeks before he's back on the floor playing. But uh, what he, is still, this? he still has a goal, Mark, of, you know, of, of trying to come back and play. And this is just a setback for him. This is not, not the end. You're taking it very calmly here. Well, I believe in Michael, so I know somewhere down the road he's going to give it another great shot. And what a shot by Roger Bell, who just checked in. Robert Ory on the floor for the first time for the, for the Lakers. And the Sixers now lead at 23 to 21. Here's Fisher. That's an unusual shot for Daryl Fisher. That's what they want him to take, that shot on the move. Roger Bell. Close to a travel. Changed his mind. He had the, the three great point of set. Iverson. Oh, good decision by Roger Bell. As they're able to reset. And the Sixers now lead 25 21. Well, you can see what the Lakers do on any kind of screen roll. They push it to the baseline. They're going to give you that jump shot. You see the hand in the face, but they just don't want Iverson to get all the way to the basket. They want to make him a jump shooter. Robert Ory's in his last six from downtown. Kale O'Neal, he's been all clear at the start. One minute left. 
And the first. Oh, very close. Yes, I oh. with a nice pass. Emerson for Lynch and George Lynch with his first field goal of his NBA final. And that was very close to an offensive foul. Iverson is playing with two fouls. Six unanswered points for the Sixers. Bell knocked it away. And a foul is called. That will be his yes. first. The contact and the foul. So we will have to keep our eye on exactly what occurs now with Allen Iverson sitting and how long will Larry Brown sit him. You know, with this being a game that if you lose, you're done. Normally you maybe set the guy out the entire second quarter, Mark. I don't think Larry will do that tonight. I think he'll I think he'll bring him back in the second quarter. Iverson, the player who really gets himself in foul trouble. He came out very excited, picked up those two fouls within 30 seconds, and then picked up a technical. That's why you hate to see your best player take frustration fouls. And the first foul of the game was a frustration foul. He thought he got fouled. He just reached out and grabbed Fisher. Kevin Ali has come on for Allen Iverson. Matumbo draws the double. Roger Bell right over. Rebounded by Bryant. And the Lakers will live with Roger Bell taking open three-pointers. I think when you look at the 76ers, if they come back next season, you're going to see them add a couple three-point shooters. If they have a weakness, that's one thing that they don't do well. O'Neal with the beautiful drop step. That's his third field goal. Six points for Shaq. Final seconds of the first quarter. Snow angling and is fouled by Shaw. They had the foul again. Rick Fox got hit with a blind screen. He's holding his right arm and shoulder. I don't know whether his teammate talked to him on the pick or not, but he is guarding him. You've got to speak. And that screen is coming up behind you. That defender has got to let you know that that, that is coming so you don't get that kind of shot that he took. Allen Iverson checks back in with three and five tenths seconds remaining in this first quarter to Ron Lou. Now one of Allen Iverson's closest friends. Well, now you say, why is Iverson in? Obviously, the last shot. They want him to catch the ball. The big thing you can't do is run in there and get a charge. Oh, Luke got picked off. Iverson for three. And that is the end of the first quarter. The Hawkers played well the last couple of games. Been a steady influence. Last game of the, in the first half, he also was a scorer. It's Kobe Bryant. Aaron McKee did not go for the pump fake. Shot clock down to four. Here's O'Neal. And the tumble on the loose ball. The Kimbe's done a nice job. It appears that Shaq's not just emotionally into this game yet. Marlon, I don't know if he's pacing himself for the finish, but not off to that strong start that we normally see. He came out with power the other night. Game four, a tumble. And here's Shaq getting down the court. And the crowd looking for a foul off the contact with McKee. Now that's what we saw the other night. Early in the game, Shaq ran early. He got to the basket. He caught the ball around the rim and finished with power. Let's see if that gets him going. Six or eight is now one. Snow off the pick from a tumble. Blocked. Matumbo, foul. And the foul is called on Ori. Shaquille O'Neal just released on the shot. Here he goes for the ball. Sixer fans felt he just bowled McKee out of the way. That's one of those no calls. You got both guys sort of going for the play. Just play on. Shaq is just so much bigger and stronger. He was able to play through the contact. McKee, and McKee showing some signs. We talked the other night about the fatigue factor with the McKee's playing with an assortment of injuries. It's not been himself. It has not helped that he's had to follow a Kobe Bryant around on the defensive end. And Robert Ory with his seventh straight three-pointer overall in the finals, eight for 11 from downtown. Seven of his last seven from three-point range. Well, we talked about it in our open. We said that Robert Ory is always at his best in the NBA Finals. Back-to-back -back 
championships with the Rockets, now trying to go back to back with the Lakers. But he comes in the game. He's a terrific defender. And what we've also seen him do in this series, Marv, is be a press breaker. He takes the ball up the floor against the power forwards of the Sixers to release some pressure. You see with Iverson down, they got outscored by five points. Larry Brown says, no time for tomorrow. I got to get him back in the game. So Allen Iverson back on the floor. Ron Lewis there. Brian Shaw with the steal. And fouled by Aaron McKee. Avoiding the, the layup by Shaw. How about Brian Shaw this past Tuesday morning? Went back home to Oakland, California for the birth of his daughter. Brian's wife, uh, Nikki, gave birth to Bianca. Brian made the trip and then flew back to Philadelphia in time for game four. On Wednesday, did a nice job in his 10 minutes of uh, playing time, including hitting another three-pointer. Lakers now lead by two. A tumble with the second effort. And the game is tied at 31. You know, nobody can play against Shaq uh, head up more. There's no question. But you know what? Dikembe has really earned a lot of respect in this series. He has stood in there. He's played exceptionally well on both ends of the floor. There's just no one who's a matched individual for Shaquille O'Neal. Back comes Iverson. Shaq thus far four for eight, eight points. Beautiful pass as Hill was able to get position. It was held by Fox. Dikembe going to the offensive boards after the miss. He stays with his shot. The long arms gets up there sooner than any of the Lakers can and gets the nice, kind roll with the finish. So Dikembe Mutombo, the emotion, the expression, and he told his teammates between games, he goes, guys, we cannot wait till the fourth quarter to try to turn it on. We've got to come from energy with energy from the start of the game. Marv, they've done a much better job of that. Eric Snow has really helped this team. And Tyrone Hill off to a much better start. You see, he did get it going a little bit in game four. He did have seven points, but 17 fouls in this series. His rebounding has been down tonight. He has five points and six rebounds. So off to a good start. Tyrone during the regular season having just under a 10 a game. That will count and the foul. Rick Fox headed to the line. He's off to a fast start. He'll look for his ninth point of this half. Well, Aaron McKee's going to have to sit down. Now, this is two fouls in a row by, on the fast break. He took a foul on Shaw. This time he gets Rick Fox. Rick Fox just sort of gets that shoulder inside of him. And you see Kobe Bryant. Kobe talked to me before the game. He said, we just got to stay in the moment. He said, our whole thing is we know they're going to come out with energy. They're going to put a, a surge at us. We have to keep our poise. And we just have to be close when we get into that second quarter. Well, Marv, you look up at the score, and if Fox makes this free throw, it's a tie game. So three minutes gone by in the second quarter. Gerard Lou all over Allen Iverson. Now Iverson with the step back. Good job by Jermaine Jones, who just checked in. Maybe some pressure will be taken off Jermaine Jones. Really not a starter. He's playing out of his role with all the injuries. Maybe coming off the bench, he'll relax a little bit. Ori cheating off to help on the tumble. Oh, so heavy tumble. With a running hook, he now has eight points. And the game is tied at 34. Try to save it. Snow getting the step. And the foul is called on the Lakers. Ron Lou being helped up. Blocking foul though on Lou. See the footwork of Sha Shaq. We always talk about his power, but the little hop step. He gets a nice rhythm when he can hop across that middle and he just sort of squirts that ball over his right shoulder. That's an impossible shot to block. Eric Snow playing with a stress fracture in his right ankle. Looking for his third point. He does have four assists. During the series against Milwaukee, Larry Brown was showing a teammate's footage of Willis Reed making that dramatic entrance out of the floor back in the 69-70 series against the uh, L.A. Lakers. 
as inspiration with all the injuries suffered by the Sixers that were calling Eric Willis Jr. Now I have a question. Was the yes. inspiration Willis walking out or was the fact that it was your voice calling it? Yes, sir. many players mentioned that. Here's O'Neal and a foul is called. They did mention it was the very inspirational sound that just turned them around. It would have fired me up. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure. So Shaq to the line. Lynch called for the foul. And Philadelphia having its difficulties at the line once again. Two for seven from the free throw strike. And Shaq hitting his first from the foul line. Shaquille O'Neal working himself up that ladder of all-time scoring averages in the playoffs. He's been sensational once again, and if the Lakers go on to win this, he will be hands-on the guy that will win the MVP of the finals. It will be back-to-back, -back, and he will also join a very select company and guys who've been able to do that in their careers. And the four games coming into tonight, Shaq averaging 34 points, 16 rebounds, five assists, three block shots. Iverson is now five for 13. Iverson trying to draw the foul. What flying. Oh, for three. That's his first miss after hitting seven straight. And a foul is called. As Fox and Jones got involved, it's on Fox. Mark, we got to keep our eye on Allen Iverson. He has been holding his right side. And I don't know if he took a shot early or on a fall or whatever, but he, he has been holding his right side. And since he's come back, he's cooled off a little bit. Iverson goes down here. But actually, even about the last four or five minutes, I've been watching him. So we'll have to keep our eye on him to see if that's bothering him. Four-point lead for the Lakers, their biggest lead of the night. Iverson has missed his last four shots. Matumbo. Oh. And back comes Teron Lou. Here's Rick Fox. And he's fouled. Well, if that's Aaron McKee, that will be his third. That will be a tough foul. He and Iverson will both have three fouls. And it is three on McKee. Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Yeah, Mark, for more on this uh, situation with Allen Iverson, I've been watching him over here for the last two timeouts, and he has had a bag of ice on the right hip. Now, a few minutes ago, the trainers told me that he has a bruised hip, but I also saw him mouthing the words ribs. But there's no confirmation that there's a rib problem, but he is definitely in pain on the right side. Mark? All right, Lewis, here's a look at uh, that collision with Kobe Bryant. And apparently that's where he injured his ribs. Yeah, he also got his third foul on that play that you spoke about. So it's foul trouble starting to mount up. Remember, they got three quick fouls to start the game, sort of set the tone. But Iverson and McKee, both with three. Lakers now lead by six. 6.25 remaining in the first half. Snow challenging O'Neal. And it was Ori who came over and came up with the block shot. Eric Snow looking for the foul was sandwiched between two players. Many instances, Marv, if the ball is blocked, whatever happens after that, they rule incidental contact. Ten on the shot clock. Iverson trying to shake Lou. Here's Hill. Oh, Tyrone Hill very much into it tonight. That's his third field goal. He has seven points, six rebounds. The Sixers down by four, but Shaq gets it right back. Had my eye on Shaq the entire way, went right to the front of the rim. Kobe was watching him. He pointed to the corner, said, throw it to the corner and get me the ball inside. That's exactly what they did. Joe Crawford, the baseline official, checking with uh, Bernie Fryer. Looking to work himself into this game after what would be a slow start for him. Shaq with only one foul thus far in this first half. He did foul out of game three in foul difficulty in game two. Finished with five in, in game two. Allen Iverson with his first points of this second quarter has 13 for the night, and the Lakers are up by four. Derek Fisher. Is back Fisher and Bryant in the backcourt. Fox, Corey, and O'Neal up front. Kobe got the baseline cut off by Jones. Goes right back at him. And it's foul. 
Well, Kobe is, is struggling from the field, and when you do that, you want to get to the foul line. Remember, Marv, in game one, when the Lakers lost their only game of the playoffs, Kobe only got to the line one time on a technical. Now he's working to get inside, put the pressure on the defense. You get to that line, you get some free throws, maybe get a couple fast breaks, and then that jumper starts to fall. That's how you work yourself back into the game. Kobe shooting two. Kobe does have five rebounds, four assists as we approach five minutes remaining in this first half. The Lakers with the ball and they lead by six. The Los Angeles Lakers looking to conclude matters tonight for a second straight NBA championship. The alley up for O'Neal. Rick Fox right on target. When the emotion is out of the game like it is now, it comes to execution. The Sixers are starting to get a little flat right now. They need a score. Lakers with their biggest lead of the night. They now lead by eight. Here's Hill. Well, Tyrone Hill, four for six from the floor. He has nine points. The 76 er players feel that uh, Tyrone has been distracted throughout the playoff run, worrying about his uh, father who had been ill. Father was recently discharged from the hospital a couple of weeks after having a stroke. Here's Hill. And O'Neal with the rebound. Tyrone Hill during the regular season. That was 10 points, 9 rebounds, and Coming into tonight, only six for 20 from the field. Again, O'Neal getting down deep. Warner oh, able to steal that rebound. He's wide open. It's an unusual shot for O'Neal. He's too close to the basket. Bryant for three. Yes. So Kobe Bryant with his first field goal. He missed his five. Previous shots. See how many times have we seen second shots lead to those open threes? Marv, you can't get to a guy when you're scrambling to get on the board. Lakers quietly pulling themselves out to a nine point lead. It is a nine point Laker lead. 315 remaining in the first half. The tumbo thought he was fouled. Rick Fox open. O'Neal able to keep it alive. Oh, beautiful backdoor pass, but Fox came up short on the reverse. Eric Snow pushing it. Rodney Buford is on the floor for the first time. That's Buford with the ball, and he fires. Mark, we talked about Allen Iverson when he picked up his third foul in the first uh, quarter. How would that affect his team? Since that point in time, they've been outscored 27 to 13. He has lost his rhythm, and so has the team. And the Lakers have killed the Sixers from the three-point line. They're six of eight from downtown. Illegal defense called for the first time against the uh, 76ers. And at the foul line, the Lakers 13 of 14, while the 76ers once again have struggled four for nine at the line. remaining in this first half. Here's Brian. Kobe is now one for seven from the field. Fox able to break it up. That was intended for Buford. Well, one of the things the Lakers have done as the series has gone on, they have really concentrated on their transition defense, taking away easy scores by the Sixers. If the Sixers don't steal the ball, get in the open court and get layups, it's very difficult for them to score. And the Lakers have been very, very good, Marvin, getting back and taking away that. Iverson! Adam Iverson from downtown. He has 16 points. That's his second three. And the Lakers now lead by six. O'Neal. Rebounded by Buford, who can win. Penetrates. He scores in bunches. He'll miss four or five in a row. That's not going to deter him. He's going to keep firing. A little five points spurred here. And once again, the Sixers are within four. Bryant with the spin. Last touch by the 76ers. So it's Laker ball with a minute and 36 to go in this first half. 
And the Sixers off a flurry by Iverson are now within four. Fox will put it in play. O'Neal. And deflected out by Buford. So the Lakers now have 18 on the shot clock. 76ers hoping to extend this series to a sixth game back in Los Angeles on Monday night. Kevin Ali replacing Allen Iverson sits down with 18 points. Fox trying the element of surprise with that inbounds and a foul. Shaq was held and he'll go to the line. Both teams are over the foul limit. Well, Allen Iverson gets hot. He scores two straight baskets. He pulls back and he hits a three. And he follows it up with a great drive over Shaquille O'Neal. He is so good at this shot. This little teardrop floater. He uses the backboard to soften that shot up. He scores five straight points. Now, the reason Larry Brown took him out, he was going to go offense, defense. He does not want him to pick up his fourth foul. So anytime there's a stoppage, he'll try to get him back in for his offense. And now he's checked back in. After sitting down as Shaq goes to the line, Iverson back on the floor. The foul was called on Eric Snow. Shaquille O'Neal now two of three at the line. Had a uh, off performance in game four, just eight for 16 at the line. So it's Philadelphia ball. They're down by only four. A minute 20 left in the half. And the call against Fisher. That is his second. Many instances, they'll let that contact go. Sometimes they'll call it. You have to read what the officials are doing. And again, Iverson on one of those little runs that, he's, that he needs to get his team, you know, back in this game. They were down nine at 49-40. They're trying to close this as they go into half. It'll be very important. Iverson with six straight points for the 76ers and has 19. Larry Brown telling us prior to the game that the 76ers looks like the Kevin Matumbo has drawn blood and he'll be replaced by, by Matt Geiger. I can't imagine how he would draw blood. He's only playing against <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you honestly think that he could do that, Mark? Here's Geiger coming on for the, the first time. Uh, the Kevin's been smacked around pretty good, <laughs> I'd have to say, as Shaq uh, would be the first to admit. Back in game two, suffered a cut on his tongue, took three stitches after the game. Say, Allen Iverson has to be very, very careful here. That's last minute. He cannot get his fourth foul. It's a three-point Laker lead. O'Neal going right at Geiger. And the foul is called. That's a great foul. Matt Geiger comes into the game for uh, Matumbo. You get that deep in the post. Shaq has just missed two free throws. Foul him and make him go back to that free throw line. And here comes the captain. Changing the jersey. Making his way over to the uh, scorer's table. O'Neal two for four. From the line. Looks like he has that stroke back. Just under one minute remaining in the half. Iverson. Fisher breaks down, chased by Snow, and has to reset it. The Lakers with a 50 to 46 lead. Here's Bryant. Oh, what a spectacular play. Harvey fumbled the ball, but his footwork was brilliant to turn and hit that shot. Allen Iverson felt that he traveled. Snow will go to the line. Iverson has three fouls. He cannot get his fourth. Kobe recognizes that. So where does he go? Right to the front of the rim. Fumbles the pass. But look at the gorgeous footwork to swing away from the defense. You've got a little half hook. And Kobe's got the entire package, Marv. I call him in the open the most complete player on the perimeter in the NBA. That's a combination of his playmaking skills, his ability to score, but also as an all-league defender. Eric Snow hits his first free throw. That's Kevin Ali checking back in. Larry Brown not taking any 
chances. Allen Iverson will, will sit down. Allen Iverson looking as if he is in great pain as he uh, took a seat on the bench. Well, you know, that rib injury hurts. You get hit in the ribs. When I talked to, to Michael yesterday, he said that that's one of the most painful things he went through is a, a couple of those broken ribs. So Michael who? Michael, well, you know. Michael, oh, Michael, yeah, that Michael. Michael. There's I'm only sorry. one Michael. Come on now. Well, he suffered the, the injury uh, the other day during a workout. Shaq handling the ball, had it knocked away from behind. Last touch by the uh, 76ers. How will those bruised ribs affect Michael's return in terms of getting back in time to be able to attract free agents? Well, he just said it's it's basically going to delay his decision for a couple months. But I, or when in talking to him, we can see Kobe once again in the post. And talking to him, he's very committed to once he gets over this uh, injury to coming back and getting himself in the kind of shape he thinks he needs to play. So he, he, he'll be ready. Allen Iverson checking back in with the uh, Sixers back to the offense 19 points for Iverson 7 of 16 from the field and there's no question he is uh, playing despite the pain from the bruised ribs well we showed well ago all the minutes that he has played they will take their toll when you play with the energy and, and getting all the contact he does how many times does he get knocked down during the course of a game seconds of the half. Here's the double on Iverson, and it's a kick ball. Iverson was looking for Ali. See, now Aaron McKee's going to come back in the game with three, three fouls to give them another shooter on the floor if they double team. Now, who's Shaq going to guard? With that said, looks like Ron Harper's going to come in, probably take Shaq out of the game. It's a big possession here right now. The, if the Sixers can score, three-pointer, they cut it to one, a two-pointer cuts it to two, they'll be right there. So both uh, coaches playing a little chess game here right now to finish the half. So both teams now going small. Iverson checking the clock. Iverson putting the move on. Fisher has to force one up. Played very well by Derek Fisher. And that is the end of the first half. Fisher would not allow the good look. At halftime here in Philadelphia, it's the Lakers with a 52-48. You can see Allen Iverson leaning to his right, favoring the rim. Yeah. Uh, the Lakers with a decisive edge of the foul line and also hitting three, six for nine from downtown. There's Kobe. The play by McKee to get it away from Fox. Lakers with that four-point lead as this third quarter gets underway. Allen Iverson hanging in, being played aggressively by Derek Fisher. Beats him off the dribble, rejected by O'Neal. The Sixers have to come with that same energy they started the game with. They cannot dig themselves a hole. Fisher for three. Derek Fisher from downtown. And that's his third three. Larry Brown is going to have to really watch his team, Marv. If, they, if the Lakers score a couple times, he's going to have to take some timeouts. He's got to control this game right now. Matumbo fed by McKee, and he's fouled. O'Neal with his second. Here's Derek Fisher right here, and on the penetration by Kobe, he's just going to kick the ball right back to him. See him pull the defenders. Three guys go to his penetration, and Fisher squares it up. Those are the kind of shots he got against San Antonio when he went 15 of 20 in that series, set a record uh, for field of three-point field goals made in a four-game series. The Kevin Matumbo at the line for the first time. See the numbers on Derek Fisher. The Lakers now seven of ten from three-point range. An interesting stati uh, statistic as we see Matumbo at the line. The 76ers, 28 points in the paint in the first half. The Lakers only 18. Normally, that has been the other way. So even with them controlling the paint, they still trail. Lakers have a six-point edge. They open up with Bryant, Fisher in the backcourt. O'Neal, Grant, Fox up front. Got clock at five. Kobe able to recover. Rebounded by Grant. Horace Grant overshoots, but Bryant able to come away with it. Wow. Kobe yeah. Bryant. Mark, what, what hustle. Missed his first three shots of the quarter. He just wanted that ball and got it.
got it back and was able to knock it down. What a great play. Lakers now lead 57 49. And the foul is called on Grant. The horse, it is his second. When you are trying to get back in the game, you've got to come up with every loose ball. You can see Horace Grant takes it away from Tyrone Hill. Now watch Kobe just wrestle this ball away and muscle it back into the basket, looking for something to get him going. A key eluding Fox. And then a foul is called as Hill got involved with Grant. Tyrone Hill called for his second personal. Doug, you look back to the Western Conference run by the Lakers to the brink of repeating. And winning another title. The Lakers won their three elimination games by an average of 16 points. Two of their three previous series against Portland and Sacramento were clinched on the road. They have got 7-0 and on the road in this playoff run. And Kobe Bryant beginning to feel it. See, that's what happens. You get yourself a hustle basket. You come right back and you get that little spinner on the baseline. Lakers open up a 10-point lead. Jared Snow, Sixers are getting their shots. Not able to hit. This is danger time. Fisher. Rebounded by Grant. And a foul. Honors Grant doing a terrific job. Well, the question is, are the Sixers out of gas? I mean, we talked about, Mark, before the game in our open. This game was not going to be about energy or hustle or any of those things. It was going to be about execution. Right now, the Sixers look like a very tired team. The Lakers are beating them to every loose ball to start this third period. Honest Grant running for his fourth NBA championship. A member of three title teams with the Chicago Bulls. It's been eight years, though, between championships for Harris, who came over in that four-team trade from the Seattle Sonics. Well, I tell you, I feel old watching Horace Grant. I was his first coach when he was a rookie. He and Scotty Pippen came in. What careers those two guys have had. Championships, and to watch them grow and blossom into these kind of players has really been amazing. Here's Snow just firing one up. Snow on the recovery. Lakers with a 60-51 lead. Three minutes gone by in the third quarter. Good play by Snow. And then fouled by Bryant. Kobe's got to be aware that any time Eric Snow is in the game, he's going to be tracking that ball. Eric Snow makes a very difficult shot at the basket, but does not quit on the play, gets up off the floor, and then knocks in that little 8-10 to 10 foot jumper on the baseline. Iverson, yes. So Iverson is now 8 of 19. He has 21 points. The Sixers down by 7. There's Fox getting the step and draws the foul. Rick Fox will surprise you with his quickness. That time he saw an opening and took it right to the basket. Allen Iverson always working off the basketball. You see Derek Fisher go for the steal and he just sort of slides to that open area on the baseline to knock in that jump shot. Works so well without the basketball. And Marv, it's interesting because in college he had the ball so much in his hands. He did the same thing when he came into the league early. But they really have made him into a two guard, and he has learned so well how to move without that ball and use those screens. And Tyrone Hill, who has emerged as an important player for the Sixers tonight, picked up his fourth. So he sits down. Three fouls the last 95 seconds committed by Tyrone Hill, bringing on Matt Geiger as his replacement. Lewis Johnson reporting that George Lynch. Suffering a strained toe in the first half will not make a return tonight. Iverson for three. Algaier and Grant in a battle, and the foul is called on Grant. Well, they're going to need some play from Matt Geiger. Now, he has had games where he's come in like in game one. He had five field goals, gave him 10 points off the bench in the victory. He's come in, hit some shots, but he's gotten himself in foul trouble. Marv, he can only play in spurts. So for five, six minutes, he has got to give his team something. Well, in this instant, Matt Geiger not matched with Shaquille O'Neal. He's matched up with Horace Grant. A tumble. Turned back by O'Neal. Snow had it struck. Crowd 
looking for a foul on the Lakers. Play by McKee getting up in the face of Fisher preventing the three-point attempt. Here's Bryant able to post up. Rebound O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal with 19 points. Well, it was great recognition by Kobe. Iverson was on him on the switch. He went into the post. He missed a little jumper, but once again, that offensive rebound, that quickness to the ball by the Lakers here that we've seen the entire third period. Snow draws the foul. That's three on Kobe Bryant. And Kobe has tried to downplay the fact how much this means to him winning the series here in his hometown Philadelphia grew up in the suburbs Lower Marion as you know as a one-time member of the Philadelphia 76ers he literally grew up across the way in the hallways of the spectrum playing with children of Lionel Hollins and, <laughs> and Julius Irving just kind of hanging around that's right his dad uh, Joe Bryant a member of the 76ers there's Kobe with a strong move against Matt Geiger. They switch out on that screen, and Geiger just does not have the foot speed. Normally, Matumbo wants to come over and block that shot, but he knows if he doesn't get it, he's got uh, Shaquille there on the offensive backboard. He just does not want to leave him. Lakers have an 11 point lead. Now Geiger operates at the high post. Got clock at six. Matumbo is surprised to find the ball in his hands. And very close to a traveling violation. Phil Jackson is upset. Calls a timeout. Well, a brilliant coach, and as long as this team stays together, Kobe and Shaq, and he stays here, he could set a lot of records on championships, shatter all coaching records, and he has done a magnificent job throughout his career. Morris Grant is fouled. That, that bailed out the Lakers. Well, we're looking at very elite company here. Red Auerbach, nine NBA championships, 10 years. Casey Stengel, seven World Series titles. Vince Lombardi with five in, in seven years. National Hockey League, Scotty Bowman winning five NHL Stanley Cups. Phil Jackson is one win away from a, another title. Making a move on Arnold and Red Auerbach. We think about it now. He won three in a row in Chicago. That team broke up a little bit when Michael decided to take a little time away. So Michael comes back and he wins it three more times in a row with a different group of guys. Takes a year off, comes here to L.A., wins one last year. Looks like he's going to win number two. Incredible what he's done. And last touch by Rick Fox. Red Albach, nine NBA championships, head coach of the Boston Celtics, followed by Phil Jackson, John Cutler of the old Minneapolis Lakers. In fact, for the uh, Lakers, this is the uh, 26th trip to the finals, the most appearances in NBA history. They won 12 championships, seven in LA and five in Minneapolis. McKee coughs it up. Well, you see Aaron got right into the heart of the defense, thought he had a passing lane at the last minute. Everybody backed away to take that uh, pass away, and he was too far underneath the basket, had no place to go. Lakers with the ball, up by 10, with just under six remaining on the third. O'Neal, that's a traveling violation. like the Sixer fans go finally you call traveling there's a little hop step Shaq just got out of rhythm on that play normally gets that little two foot step and goes right into a shot that time he was out of sync Larry Brown going with Eric Snow at the point has the three guards on the floor Snow Iverson and the key the big bad Matumbo and Geiger Iverson for three yes so the Laker lead is now seven Pressure being shown by the Sixers. And as the series has progressed, the Lakers handling the pressure more effectively. Iverson 
deflects it out. Well, they only had three turnovers in the first half. Speaking of the Lakers, it led to two points. And remember, in game one, they had 19 that led to 25 points. So as the series has gone on, they've done less dribbling, more passing, and it's been much more effective for them. And what has helped the ball handling of Rick Fox, who's come up high, along with Robert Orr. 24 second violation. Signs of a run here by the 76ers. Lakers have led by as many as 11. It's now a seven-point game. We are just under five minutes remaining in the third. Iverson setting it up on Fisher. Yes. <laughs> Again, he's on one of those spurts. That's exactly what he does. This is four or five. Shooting 67 62. Shaq on the follow, and he is fouled again. It looks like a harmless play, but if Shaq gets another technical, he would be out of the game, as would Matt Geiger. So he's got to stay away from another technical. O'Neal three of six at the line. Coming into Tonight, Shaq had his ups and downs at the free throw line. Wednesday night, eight for 16. And you can see how he's changed the score. It, it's one of those things where he, when he gets out of rhythm, he goes back to his bad habits. The Laker lead is down to five. Iverson has a shot blocked by Fisher. Just slow it. Iverson. Able to recover that because of the Brewers' rib injury for Kale. It counts and the foul. Well, he just wheeled in there, and Dikembe Matumbo leads with his head. He is very fortunate that he really has not gotten hurt with some of these power moves, but just watch the head of Matumbo as he leans right in there. And Shaq, with that shoulder, powers himself to the basket. Marvel, I've said before, I think Shaq is the most difficult guy in the league to referee. What is a normal move? Excessive. I don't know how you can determine that with him. He's so strong. O'Neal completes the three-point play. Second foul called on Matumbo. Here's McKee for Snow. Yes. He has worked so hard to become a decent jump shooter. He wants to drive the basketball, but he knows now that with Iverson and all the double teams, he has to make that little shot. And the Lakers overall have won. 22 of their last 23 games. O'Neal is met by Geiger and a foul is called. Well, with Shaq shooting free throws the way he is, the one thing that the Sixers cannot do is allow him to catch the ball and dunk it. And Larry Brown does not believe in the hack of Shaq. And what he means by that is he doesn't believe in chasing Shaq around the floor and, and fouling him off the basketball. But he said, you know what, we have to take fouls in that paint area. We cannot allow Shaq to dunk the ball, but they've got to protect Matumbo because he can't take all the fouls, Marv. They have to come down and help him with other people. And it looks like uh, Shaq has relocated the touch. Now five for ten on the line. For a moment, he had had the touch going. His highlight game from the foul line was uh, game three this past Sunday night. He actually hit eight of nine at the free throw strike. It was Aaron McKee. Oh. Geiger on the save. Heads up in the hands of Fox. Bryant fouled by Snow. So Kobe will shoot two. Both teams are over the foul limit. Eric Snow committing his third. Kobe Bryant six for seven from the line. He's only five for 16 from the field. And Derek discussing it with the official Dick Bavetta. So Iverson to the line. He's four for six at the foul line. Kevin Ali. Rodney Buford over at the uh, scorer's table trying to check in. Iverson was about to take the free throw, and Joe Crawford 
ran over and said, hold it. Obviously did not affect the touch. Now here come Ali and Buford for Snow and McKee. Well, you sub after the first free throw, and it's, and it's a two-shot foul like that. So what Larry Brown's trying to do right now, can he buy a little time for Eric Snow and Aaron McKee here at 3.15 to go? Because then they're going to have to have a furious finish. Those guys are going to have to have a lot of energy. So can you buy some minutes and turn it up then in the fourth quarter and try to get this game? Light pressure being shown by the Sixers, extending the defense. Brown was called on Buford. Rodney Buford during the regular season, toward the end of the regular season, was getting the playing time after the injury suffered by uh, several of the uh, Sixers. Buford had some, some big ball games. And he's shown the ability he can score, but that's a bad foul right there. You come in the game to buy some time. Rick Fox is dribbling the ball 20 feet away from the basket, and you foul him and put him on the free throw line. When you're trying to catch up, you cannot make those kind of plays. Fox, six of six at the line. So he has been perfect. Rick has 15. It's his best game since game one when he hit for 19 points. Lakers lead 75-66. Just under three to go in the third. Fox draws the foul. It's on Buford. So two bad fouls by Buford. See that? You, you come in the game, keep it simple. You know, don't try to do anything out of the extraordinary. And here's Rodney Buford. When you throw that shoulder out, you know, Rick Fox does a nice job. Flops back, it's, uh, you know, he's behind the three-point line, so the worst thing that happens is you pop back up and guard him. But two bad plays here by Rodney Buford. Looks like Snow's going to come right back in the game. Fisher looking for the screen, and then pops one home. Garrett Fisher with a three. That's his fourth from downtown, and he has 12 points. This timely shooting, just at the right time to get the Lakers those little spurts to keep the Sixers at bay. And that's an offensive foul on Iverson lowering his shoulder. That'll be his fourth. So three tough fouls in a row here on the Sixers, Mark. They had cut it to a single-digit uh, lead. And here, watch Iverson now as he pushes off of that off arm against Derek Fisher. And, uh, you know, Marv, I said earlier in the telecast, I think with the changing of the rules next year, the, the Sixers, one thing they're going to have to do is add some perimeter shooting. They've got great defenders, but they need to have some more shooters on the floor. Single coverage on O'Neal. Gives it up. Horace Grant, yes. Six points for Horace. Since the double technical, Mark, it was 67-62 when Shaq got the double technical with Geiger. They've been on a 13-4 run. 14-point advantage, biggest lead of the game for the Los Angeles Lakers. Wilford, and then try to tip it to the top of the top, able to hustle it down. A minute 40 left in the third quarter. Pass intended for Geiger, but Bryant saw it coming. Morris Grant. Iverson just gave Rodney Buford a look. Like, what are you doing? A couple fouls and shooting the ball? He's fighting off his teammates to Kevin Vitello for that rebound. <laughs> Iverson getting the pick. A minute remaining now in this third quarter. Snow for Geiger. Yes. That's what he's done the entire series. He's made open jump shots. He's just got to be able to stay out on the floor. But when Ori's in the game, it really hurts him with his quickness. He can play against Horace Grant and be much more effective. Horace Grant will come in in the fourth period. That's what Phil will play him. That was the first shot taken by Geiger. Got clock at five. And the foul is called. The Kevin Matabo getting the wraps on Shaquille O'Neal. Well, it's a subtle little thing that Shaq does. He catches the ball in the post, and if he doesn't have a shot, he throws the ball out. And when the ball is in the air, he drives his defend defender deeper underneath the basket. So when he catches it, he's closer to the basket. So he gets position when that ball is in the air. He drives that defender underneath the basket.
All right, now watch it. Shaq throws the ball out. And look where he gets it when he catches it back. He was outside the paint. When he gets it back, he's inside the paint. So he continues to work when that ball is in the air. You can't relax on him. And as Shaq told us the other day, he can always go to that second move, third, <laughs> fourth. He also said he's very quotatious. <laughs> yeah. uh, he has uh, enjoyed himself here this week. Well, I know one thing. He's very powerful, and he's awfully good, too. Iverson changed his mind. Iverson sets it up for three. Well, that would have been a big shot. That would have cut it to 10. Now the Lakers look like they can hold it for the last shot, try to push this to 15 or 16. Sixers only 68 points in the game. Lakers defense has been awesome. O'Neal to the hook shot. And a very friendly roll with five and six tenths seconds remaining in the third. Eric Snow swings away. The Los Angeles Lakers with an 83-68 lead on the Philadelphia 76ers. Snow being guarded by Shaw, getting the stuff, and then he blew the stuff. Here comes Cody McKee racing back and prevented the dunk at the other end. Sort of says it all, doesn't it? A power move. Shaq had just taken a shot that hit the rim five times and went in. Looks like a point blank shot. He misses it, and it starts a fast break for the Lakers. Kobe off and running, but here he is going to the basket. A power move, just couldn't finish it. And it bounces out, and Kobe gets a break going the other way and gets to the free throw line. Kobe Bryant now 9 of 10 at the line. Here's Teron Liu replacing Derek Fisher. Lee's with 12. Derek Fisher with 4 from downtown. Kobe having a similar game to game 4, where it was his all around play, more as a setup guy, although he did come out shooting, has not shot well, 5 for 16, and still. The Lakers have this commanding lead. Well, I give Kobe a lot of respect here because it would have been human nature for him to come in and try to put up big numbers, but he has not done that. As we see Iverson looking to shoot the three-point shot, but Matumbo with the offensive foul in the post. So Sixers starting to lose their composure here as they feel their season slipping away. Watch the post, Matumbo now. See if he gets his arm up in the post. He has a tendency to get those elbows up. And all the banging that goes on, it's tough that that one was called. And this is beginning to take on a familiar look in that Western Conference run to this point. The Lakers won their three elimination games by an average of 16 points. They have the big lead here. They're up by 17. And it looked like he stepped out of bounds. Well, this unit that's on the floor for the Lakers, it's Kobe Bryant. They run sort of an open court where the middle is open. They look for him to penetrate. He's got terrific three-point shooters out there with him as Shaq gets a rest. The Lakers on the seventh turnover. Here's McKee, had nowhere to go. It's another sixer turnover. Bryant, alley -oops. Ori. And uh, Robert Ori just lays it home, and the Lakers pulling away. And they now, it will take a miraculous turn by a team that is beaten up. Iverson, Allen Iverson playing with the bruised ribs, now has 30 points. A team that has shown the ability to come back on a number of occasions during the regular season and during this playoff run, but you wonder about tonight. Lakers have them overmatched at well, this point. Lamar, the Lakers are so good defensively. If they don't turn the basketball over, the Sixers just can't score enough points. Shot clock at one. Snow from a tumble and lays it in. 87, 72. Kobe Bryant has moved up front. Here is Shaw. Bryant with the rebound and with the bucket. It's a great offensive rebound. You know, Aaron McKee tried to go up with him. Kobe with the fresher legs just went right over the top of him. But the offensive rebounding starting to take its toll. Getting second shots. Kobe 23 points, 10 rebounds. Aaron Hill is hacked. Foul on 
Ori. Shot goes up. You see Aaron McKee just, just does not have anything left. He's got a chip fracture in his ankle, a sore shoulder. We're battling all kinds of ailments. And uh, Kobe with the fresher legs. See Aaron McKee going over to get a little bit of a rest. The frustration for him here growing up here, being at home, playing at Temple University. And he just, you see with the side there, he just has nothing left. He's given it all, all season long. McKee just two of five from the field. Game four, one for nine. Game three, a, a two for eight. And uh, that's not the usual contribution from Aaron McKee. Well, going into the series, it averaged 16 points a game in the playoffs. He's down to eight here now, so you get an idea of just the, the wear and tear. And also, give credit to the Laker defense. Now, they have been terrific. You know, either Kobe Bryant or Rick Fox, one of those guys have been playing him, and they've done a great job. Kill O'Neal is back on the floor. Bryant for three. Kobe Bryant with 26 points, 10 rebounds, and six assists. Well, the other night he was one assist shy of a triple double. He is now four assists away from a triple double. Well, the 76ers double teams are just so soft right now. Iverson goes down there. He can't bother Shaq, and it just opens up a wide-open three for somebody on the floor. Roger Bell with one on the shot clock is blocked, and it's a 24-second violation. Kevin Ollie getting set to check back in. City of Nebraska, a pleasant surprise in his NBA final series. It started with his defensive work against Adam Iverson. He's also uh, hit some threes, He's done it at both ends. Shot clock at five, that pass intended for Lou. Snow able to recover the dribble. Roger Bell reluctant to shoot. Tyrone Hill able to score. And the Laker lead is 16. We've got a 745 remaining in the fourth quarter. Bryant played by Hill on the Warren played by Hill, and O'Neal is fouled. That's five on Matumbo. It's Allen Iverson coming down to double team. You see, there's no energy to double team, and they can't get out of their traps. Iverson's supposed to cover that corner. When you come out of the double team, the guy directs you. He spent so much energy running around off screen trying to get open. There's nothing left then for him to double team and then try to get back to the open shooter. That's how they're getting so many open threes. Shot clock at three. Lou with a driving hook. Rebounded by Hill. So Tyrone Hill with 12 rebounds along with his 13 points. Iverson. Yes. 32 for Iverson, and the Laker lead is now 14. He just keeps coming at you. Los Angeles is led by as many as 19 just moments ago. Three seconds, violation. Kobe was late with that pass. Shaq had gotten into the lane, and when Kobe put it on the floor, by the time he could get the pass to him, Shaq had already been in the lane too long. Aaron McKee is back in. Eric Snow will report in a moment. Iverson putting moves on Lou and fires. Rebound Hill. Well, that would have cut it to 12. Well, Tyrone Hill has, has come back and played a good basketball game. Now, Kobe turning it over. I think if they score here, Phil might take a timeout. Ollie fouled by Shaw. The Horace Grant up off the bench telling guys, let's go. Don't get sloppy. You get a little bit of a lead here. You start thinking you got a cushion. Six and a half minutes to go. You're about three minutes of good, hard defense right now from winning the championship. That's how close you are. You don't want to get sloppy. Right now, three good, solid minutes, and they could close this game down. 
Ryan Shaw picked up a foul. A second, Kevin Holly at the line. And you see Derek Fisher checking back in. Here's Matt Geiger for Dikembe Mutombo receiving a standing ovation. Dikembe with five fouls. He'll get a rest, 13 points, 10 rebounds for Mutombo. It's a 12 point game. And we see pressure being brought by the Sixers. Six on run for Philly. Now Shaq guarded by Matt Geiger and his foul. Looks like they might be going to the hack of Shaq here. They've got Geiger in the game trying to protect Matumbo with fouls. So will they go the substitution, bring Matumbo in when they have the ball, try to get Geiger out there to take some fouls? Shaq going to the basket. They Sixers thought it was before the shot. The referee said no, he was in the act of shooting. It's only the 13 foul on Philadelphia. Lakers also have three. O'Neal now seven of 14 from the foul line. up 93 to 80 as we approach six minutes remaining on this fourth floor. Iverson squeezing his way. <laughs> oh, it's 34 points. And the Sixers are now down by 11. Twisting, turning, leaning. Get them all. And this crowd is back into it. Geiger reaching in. is on it. The Lakers up by 11. There's Tyrone Hill. Yes. Now the question is, do the 76ers have one more gallant run left? Looks like Geiger's going to take the foul on Jack if he catches the ball. Put him on that foul line. Well, he does not commit the foul. It's the Lakers are able to rotate it. Six on the 24. Fisher forcing a hit. What a shot by Derek Fisher with the shot clock running down. It's another three. That's his fifth from downtown. He now has 15 points, all 15 coming on three pointers. Stone for three. Geiger able to keep it alive. Iverson from way downtown. Snow on it again. Iverson again with the three. Yes. <laughs> Looks like Lori was going to get a piece of that from behind. I don't know how he kept his concentration, but Mark, the Lakers have just come up with all kinds of threes. We've seen it the entire series when they needed him. Fisher in game two, Lori in game three. O'Neal with a power move, not able to hit. O'Neal. And a foul. That will put the 76ers over the foul limit. Matt Geiger has fouled out. Six fouls in his 11 minutes. And as he left, heard the cheers from the crowd. So Shaquille O'Neal at the line. He is now 8 for 16 from the foul line. Well, if he makes these two, he will discourage them from taking fouls. That's what happened, you know, Mark, early in the playoffs. He finished the season on a high note, and teams were very concerned about taking the foul on him during the playoffs. His free throw shooting has not even been a question other than in the one game when he missed uh, 12 free throws. I would think it would pay the way he's shooting free throws tonight yes. to continue with the hacker shot. Kobe Bryant able to reach for the rebound. We're under four minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Lakers with a 10-point lead. Now they're going to start using clock, and the clock gets against them. They'll either go into Shaq just like that and get the foul, or Kobe will try to penetrate and make a play, maybe find a three-point shooter. But I have a feeling, Marv, these last 340 could go long here. And that is number six on the Kevin Matumbo. Once again, receiving a standing ovation. 
motion to Kevin Matumbo coming to Philadelphia and the trade for Theo Rattler, the trade that was not accepted at first. The Kevin, though, with a terrific run during the playoffs, and he has won over the fans of Philadelphia. I couldn't agree with you more. Theo was a very popular player, and Larry Brown said, you know, it hurt me to have to trade Theo as we see Shaq knock in the free throw. He said because he was such a big part of the turnaround. But to Kim Bay Matumbo, remember now in the All-Star game this year, the game that he had, Larry Brown was coaching that game. And right after that, they made the trade. He's come in here and won this city over with his tenacity and great play. Oh. Shaq barely getting a piece of the net. And hearing it from the crowd, but the Lakers lead 98. 87. The Kempe Matumbo averaged just under 17 points, 12 rebounds in this final series. Tyrone Hill is rejected emphatically by Shaquille O'Neal. You think Shaq was letting him know that air ball was out of his mind. He wasn't thinking about it. He said, okay, you want to challenge me in here? I'll toss that right up into row three. Third block for Shaq. Todd McCullough. Came on for the Kemi Matumbo. Here's McCullough. And Eric Snow able to convert. So the Lakers now lead 98, 89. Lakers have led by as many as 19. 76ers have it with the nine, but only three minutes left. Well, they get a stop here and hit a three. It's a two possession game, but you know what? They're going to call three seconds on Shaq. And the 76ers without the two big men, the Kevin Matumbo, Matt Geiger, both have fouled out. Tyron Hill wheeling his way. Shot rejected. Coming up on two and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. The Lakers lead 98 to 89. A 21-11 run by the Sixers, cutting into that 19-point deficit. O'Neal getting position on McCullough. Bryant. Shot clock at three. Here's Ori for three. Rebounded by Fox. Rick Fox. Able to get to the rim. No one boxing out. And Fox with 17 points. The Lakers lead by 11. Marv, that's going to do it. McCullough rejected by O'Neal. Marv, it's going to be really interesting. This Philadelphia fans, we see Tyrone. Oh, counts and the foul. But in the last moments of this game, you're going to see a real tribute from these Philadelphia fans to these 76ers, thanking them for the ride they have given them in the playoffs this year. It's a very tough crowd, but when they get behind you, Marv, I know from experience, I came here as a first-round draft pick in, in 90, uh, or 1973. The team was 9-73, and 73. and four years later, playing for a world championship against Bill Walton's Blazers. Now, they did beat us but how quickly it changed. It's sort of been the same rise with this team, Allen Iverson, to getting to this point. Eight-point game now as the three-point play was converted. Well, this uh, Sixer team that beat the Pacers three games to one. What a seven-game series from Toronto. What a seven-game series from Milwaukee. Took game one in a stunner in Los Angeles, beating the Lakers in overtime. But the Lakers have come roaring back. Another three-second violation. On Shaquille, a minute 35 remaining on the fourth. It's an eight-point game, and the Sixers in possession. Iverson overplayed by Fisher. Here's Iverson giving it up. Shot clock at 10. Snow working hard. Hill. McCullough blocked from behind by Ori and a foul. So Eric Snow will shoot two. Well, the tenacity of the 76ers, even though they're down eight, a minute 14 to go, they're going to make it difficult for the Lakers to try to hoist that trophy in their building. Shot goes up. Looks like McCullough has a, a point blank tip. Here comes Ori from behind. But Eric Snow, he'd be a great rugby player. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, with the way that ball gets on, he would come out of that scrum with it. He, he would be off and running. Snow now is five for seven at the line. Well, Eric would have the physique for rugby and for football. Six foot three, 
205 pounds. Brother Percy did play in the yes. NFL. It's down to a seven point deficit. Now remember now, you cannot foul Shaq off the basketball. It will be away from the ball. Foul will be one shot in the basketball. So the only way they can foul him is if he catches it in the post. So will the Lakers throw him the ball right now with him struggling? Both teams are over the foul limit. One minute remaining on the floor. Roger Bell defending on Kobe Bryant. And it's Jermaine Jones against Shaquille O'Neal. Oh. Fisher from downtown. 18 points for Fisher. 6 of 12 from the field. All six have been three-pointers. And they're on their feet applauding the effort of the Philadelphia 76ers who have had themselves a, a magnificent run. But it will be the Los Angeles Lakers winning a second straight NBA title and they'll make it 8 and 0 on the road in the playoffs. Now that is a record for the most consecutive road wins in a single uh, postseason. Aaron McKee from downtown with 42 seconds left. So it's a seven point game. Iverson looking for the steal and commits his fifth foul. So Robert Ory is headed to the line. Looks like Larry Brown is going to take out some of his players so they can get the recognition from this crowd. Allen Iverson getting ready to sit down and listen to this moment. It's been a spectacular season for the most valuable player, Allen Iverson. Standing ovation. Iverson. 37 points for Iverson with 40 seconds remaining. And the various 76ers applauding the crowd as Robert Ory extends to an eight-point lead. Well, if Robert Ory would have missed these two free throws, it would have been a seven-point game. Might have been a little early, but if he buries them both, it's nine. And it'll be decided. So Larry Brown, one of these this team to be able to get the recognition as Ori steps up and knocks them both in. It's a nine point lead. That's three threes, three possessions. A chant of MVP from the crowd honoring Allen Iverson as time has run out on the 76ers. Buford. Fisher on the rebound. And once again, an enormous game for Derek Fisher. The celebration has begun on the Laker bench. Coming up on 10 seconds remaining, and the Los Angeles Lakers will make it a second straight NBA crowd. Fox threw that three in <laughs> at the clock. It looked like he just threw it up there to hit the backboard, and he made it. <laughs> just looking to run it down. 